Hey, 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 everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. Hey, that was five hey's. Uh, you only get three for me. I'm Rado. No, it's oh, I think we're hey. adding a hey each time. I'm not sure how that works, actually. I need to talk to Roy. You know, I was just yes. thinking, uh, as I was getting ready for the show, that every day is a better day to be a board gamer. And the reason I say that is because these cool new games are constantly coming out. But none of the old games are being deleted. Yes, definitely. I mean, well, some of them do get harder to get, but uh, I, I know you've said this before, and I often say it. I mean, you know, if if the game industry just cur you know closed up shop tomorrow, I've got a lifetime worth of games. Uh, we really uh, do. Know, <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> if you play an Awakened Realms game. You have almost a lifetime in uh, one or two games. Uh, exactly. I'm yeah, going yeah, through yeah. ether fields right now, and I was like, huh, this is oh, going to are. be a bit. How is that going? That's it's a... going. It's, it's a beast, yeah. but I'm, I, I think I have it now. I think I have it by the tail, So, <laughs> which is not something you're supposed to be grabbing animals by anyway. Yes. Yeah, I was looking. I was like, oh, well, these guys played it a year ago, but I know that they've changed things even since then. Yeah, I mean, uh, when I was working on the, the video, they were telling me about some changes that were coming and all that. It was still a work in progress. I mean, the same thing happened to me with uh, this war of mine. The final game was very, very different than the run-through I had done, and definitely improved. So I I have fingers crossed for a weird, creepy, Well, it's not as odd sad time. as this war of mine, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure any game should aspire to be that. Um, no. after playing this war of mine, I, I need like a break from gaming almost. Uh, when we played <laughs> it, we were like, Oh, what did we just do? Yeah. Yep. So what's on the table in front of you? The biggest hexes oh, well, in the world, uh, is Plunderous. It's my game, Tom. Kind of. Sorry. Yes. I heard you talking about it on your podcast. Yep. Yeah. You said uh, hundreds of hours, I believe is what you put into it. I have probably put in, uh, up to now I've been saying over uh, 200 hours. Now I'm probably getting close to 300 hours uh, back and forth on the design. Actually, a friend of mine is designing it, and this is basically his attempt at, at um, you know, taking Twilight Imperium to the next level. And uh, so it started out as a big, sprawling 4X game, minimum three-player, six-player count. And I've been talking to him over it for years because he's been working on it for a long time. And eventually, I kind of got just pulled into working on the solo co-op expansion that will be coming with the base game, Reveille. Because, of course, I was really excited about the game, and I kept saying, I'm never going to play your game. And he said, well, I'm working on this, and a lot of the stuff that I have pushed into the co-op expansion has retroactively made it back into this game. So now, this is basically a 4X game that Care Bears can enjoy. Uh, and it now supports two players out of the box. So... Um, yeah, it's on Kickstarter right now if anybody's interested. I, I'm i only a small piece, but I'm very, very proud of this game. Well, now, see, now you put me in a, in a quandary when I review it someday. I'll be like, well, <laughs> this game is well, um, not my I, cup of I, tea. I, that's I that's what you say when you don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Personal, just in case is a fail say. <laughs> Well, you're lucky because not many copies of those in existence right now. Um, alrighty, so that's cool. Lots of things going on. I have my uh, giant pile of Dixit cards here that I need to sleeve. So. Oh, my goodness. Really? Well, Why? Because, so, you know there's all these games like Dixit out there and everything, and they all have sure. the uh, different backs. And people always say, hey, you can use one in the other game and everything else. The problem oh, right, is... Yeah, yeah. Use Mysterium the, and Dixit, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I've always wanted to do that, but the problem is finding a sleeve for it. So as part of our Kickstarter uh, backing, we made a, a, a sleeves for these. Um, so I'm going to be sleeving all of them. In his, and are I'm they gonna, Dice Tower themed sleeves? They are, and I wanted to show it to you I here. think you would want to show that off. Show that to the nice people. Well, I'm, I think maybe they've seen it, but if you, here they are. Actually, it's a custom Dixit card that was made for us. So, wow. Wow. So then I take, I'm going to take these sleeves and, you know, so this is a Dixit card, but then I got a uh, Mysterium card here. And from the front, oh, so you, you can may, mix and match. Right. And not well, know. I don't want to ruin the games. 
So I bought a second copy of all these games, and I'm going to make a giant deck in a box, and then if you play Dixit, instead of playing with the cards in the box, when you play it in the library, you can go check out that big giant box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never do anything halfway. That sometimes is problematic. <laughs> Although, I'm feeling halfway could be good. Like, I, I'm down to five kids now, and I'm like, Whew, man, when I'm down to four, is it going to feel even better? I hope my older kids aren't watching this. But life is getting better. Somebody mentioned they can barely hear me. I know. I turned myself down, and right. I can't turn you up, but I can turn myself down. Yeah. Actually, I turned myself up last time we were together, and I went back and listened afterward, and I was totally blowing out. Um, you know. Right. So it's better if story. I turn myself down. Hopefully, it is uh, better. Let us know, folks, yeah. if so. All right. So the first thing we do each week here is we take a look at a mechanism or two. How do yes, you know we... how many we take a look at? It depends if the first one will skip because <laughs> Rado doesn't play it much, and that's the case today where we start yeah. with... Sooner card... or later, we'll skip something because of you, I'm sure. Or do you think we won't? I'm not sure that there is any mechanism I, that I, I just I'm, don't I'm play. Think of something. Well, I'm we'll find out, I suppose. You're much more omnivorous than me. Anyway, card play conflict resolution. Real simply, this is where both players play a card. You reveal them, and the higher number wins, although there's sometimes it's much more involved than that. Um, conflict. I think we talked about that one last time. Maybe we? we did. No, we talked about um, I think we campaign did. battle card driven, which is different. Okay. Right. I know we didn't talk about it because it was not grayed out on my um, my my links. The, the, you can see, I, I can oh, see yeah, on my list here yeah. which ones I've done. Very way to keep track of is rely on your browser cache. Well done. So let's talk about Catch the Leader instead. Yeah. So Catch the yeah. Leader, which we just call Catch-Up Mechanism, mm -hmm. is the game system's advantage players that are behind or disadvantages players that are ahead. Now, I yep. think this is hilarious that on here they have 40. There is no way there's only 40 games that do this. It's really kind of incumbent on most games to do it in some way or other. Um, it's just yeah, but some how, games are how are, on the notes you are if you kind right. of hide it, or you just come around and say, "Yeah, this is it. You're, oh, you're winning. Uh, here's an anchor. Good luck dragging that." Yeah. So, um, uh, Power Grid, for example, Power Grid does it in a really good way. Power Grid, mm -hmm. if you are ahead then you are the last one to buy resources, which makes them higher right. priced and you may not get what you want. So it's a very nice mechanism. It makes it so you're trying not to be in the lead till the last turn. Yep. Uh, Isle of Sky, I'm trying to figure out how Isle of Sky does it. It's been a while since I played that game. I don't remember. Isle of Sky is the game where you're setting prices for each other. I'm sure somebody in the audience could, could say because we're, we're both kind of blanking on it. Quacks of Quedlingburg does it in a very blatant way with rat tails. If you're behind, you get rat tails, depending on how far you are behind, yes. and you get like a head start. Now, this one doesn't bother me either because it is, it's somewhat minor in my opinion. It doesn't, just because you have some rat tails doesn't mean you're going to win the next round. Well, I know some people have complained that they're so minor that they effectively don't do their job of allowing for a catch up that they're I think that's reasonable to say but I it's better than nothing I guess yeah yeah to, honestly I mean I think the best way a developer can go about achieving this goal because it is a worthy goal to ensure that you know no, the, the most skillful play wins but you still want everybody to feel like they're in it and but you don't want players don't want to feel like they're getting charity basically if you're too on the nose about it I think it's always best to ensure that the further ahead somebody goes, or, you know, the closer to the finish line they are, there's just implicitly more um, more stuff they have to do, more things they have to pay for. Things get a little bit more expensive, but in a natural way. I mean, the, your example about Power Grid is a great one. Oh, if right. I'm really doing well and we are stretched so thin because we're so over leveraged, it makes sense that we are now a big monopoly and we're slower to act, which is why we're last. You know, in uh, in turn order. I mean, and that 
That makes sense. And whereas the younger, nimbler, more hungry companies can reach out and grab have all the things while they're still at lower prices uh, because, well, as it happens, they're behind, but that translates thematically. And I think that's a great way to go. And um, I, I want to say I don't see it that often, but maybe good designers just do it in such a way you don't even notice. Well, one of the ways I, I've certainly raged about this in the past, uh, but feeding your people is, is definitely yes. a catch-up mechanism because if I get a bunch of workers but I can't afford to feed them all, then I get yep. slapped in the face with beggar cards and things like that. Um, yeah. Age of Steam Which is does great. It. And again, that's a thematic way to justify it rather than saying, oh, you're losing, here's some more rat tails kind of a thing. Yes. No offense to Quine Lindbergh. I know a lot of people love it. No, I think Age of Steam also does it. Uh, the way Age of Steam does it, I'm not a big fan of. The farther up you are in the track, every round you go back a certain number of spaces – and the farther you are ahead, the more spaces you go back. Right. So, like, if you're doing kind of well, a attrition. you have to do even better. Mm -hmm. I prefer mm -hmm. Lords of Vegas does it in an interesting way. As you score in that game, the points yes, that's another get, good example. The jumps between them get higher. So, if I don't get three points, I can't move to the next spot. And I like that because. I don't know. It just feels like a nice little way to do it without being overt. Yeah. Well, and it adds, it just adds another wrinkle uh, to the system. That is an interesting thing. You know, as you pull out ahead, that's something you have to build towards. Um, wow. And, this uh, is a you know, very. Once you that roadblock for a while, it gives everybody else a chance to catch up. I'm starting to wonder with yeah. these mechanisms, if when Jeff and co added them, they went in and said, Let's add three or four that show this example, and then the rest will get filled yeah. in. Because over, there is yes, only... Over the next after, 20 years. Here we have, after Tracarion, Tashkar, and Viral, and the Expanse, and there's not... Most of the rest of these, I mean, the number of ratings go down. And again, I'm telling you, this is not in like 40 games. This is in possibly thousands of games. <laughs> this is not yes, a, exactly. a minor mechanism. Uh, the fact I didn't scroll down far enough. The fact that the expanse is on this list makes me wonder if that's the why this entire category exists on board game geek. <laughs> because Jeff Engelstein, the creator of this of uh, this categorization system, is the designer of the expanse. I will say I'm a, and he um, won I, credit for how well he did it in the expanse. I don't like when games hit you over the head with it. I played a game one time that was like the first player must give a point to the last player. Yeah, exactly. Well, well fair. I mean, it doesn't make you as a leader feel good. It doesn't make the the trailing player feel good either. I mean, you nobody wants to feel like, oh, well, the game is just being charitable. You know, that's right. That's the that's the sticky thing. That's why feeding mechanism in Agricola is fantastic. I'm doing really well, but oh, everything's getting harder. Um, you know, and and if a game designs so that it gives another player who doesn't have that extra burden. Oh, another great example. Is it on here? Is um, Martin Wallace's A uh, Few Acres of Snow. I loved that idea. It's a deck building, area grabbing, area domination game where the more regions you take over, the more junk you have to throw into your deck because it represents you thematically. Well, I've got more, a bigger world I have to maintain now, and it slows down my ability to get the right cards in my hand at the right time so I can continue my war effort. And then somebody who hasn't conquered as much of the world um, has a tighter deck that allows them to stream forward. And I think that's that's That awesome. may be and what the caused the game that, to break, though. I don't actually know. Well, what, is, is, is that the crux of the Halifax Hammer? I don't know. I've, I've deliberately never looked either. at the Halifax Hammer because I don't yep. care. I don't, need my, I don't need to know what the broken strategy in a game is. I just want to play them and have fun. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, this is an interesting, an interesting idea. This is a hard one. Because certainly one of the biggest complaints about a game is if somebody pulls ahead. And I just yeah. recently played a game that I really enjoyed. But on the last round of the game, I said, huh, I can't catch up. There's, yeah. I mean, why should I even bother? And I've also played games where after the first round, I said, oh, I'm never going to catch up. And sometimes yeah. I still love the game. A good example of that, I don't know if you've played uh, Russian Railroads. Yes, of course. Yeah. So Russian Rail is a great game. Every round of that game, you get points. 
Yeah. So after two rounds, if you're playing with fairly even players, if you're 50 points ahead of me, you're probably you're going to get those same number of points every round. So unless I have some unbelievable turnaround, I probably lost. Mm. You know, you would actually yeah. almost have yeah. to do poorly at that point. Yeah. It's interesting too. I'm thinking about that, you know, Jeff chose to put this because you could have instead of calling this a particular mechanism, you could have just called this good game design. Quite frankly. <laughs> the designers just want to do this. Um and yeah, because it's contrary to what some designs do, uh, which is, oh no, the system has nothing built in to ensure that the leader slows down so everybody else can catch up. Instead, there's attack the leader, tear the leader down. You know, flux being a perfect example. Oh, there's somebody winning? Okay, everybody else will collude to rip that player back down, and it's going to be tricky until somebody can punch their way through all of that. Well, and someone just mentioned and this. this. Someone said this is why they hate Dominion. Um, but I would argue that this bothers me less if the game is shorter. Like Dominion for me is a 30-minute exactly. game, so I don't yeah. care if I quote-unquote fall behind because whatever, we just start another game. It's when it's two hours it's problematic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it is tricky. I mean, and I've certainly been in a number of times where it feels like there's nothing I can do. Man, now I have to wait another 20 minutes because Jen has beaten me again. And, but then we get to the end, and it turns out early investments pay off late. And that's another, I wouldn't call that a mechanism. I would just call that good de design. I kind of love when um, it happens in a game, though, when you look like you're losing the whole game, and at the end you're like, yeah. ooh, ooh, ha, ha. <laughs> So, all righty. Well, that's our mechanism of the week. Let's yeah. jump to our top five. All right, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you said it had to be a game thing this week. I think you promised that last time. Um, yes, because last week we we went. Oh man, I so regretted it about halfway through. Hey, let's do an entire topic that's nothing but TV finale spoilers. <laughs> well, whatever. I mean, it is. It yeah, is what it is. The analytics probably saw a huge drop off in viewership right about that time when people realized we were spoiling the end of some of the greatest TV shows of all time. Oops. So, yes, game topic this time. I think would be a, a good. Although I saw somebody just said top five MCU movies. I'll tell you right now, if you choose that one, that's what I'm doing. Because I'll talk about the MCU all day, six ways till Sunday. <laughs> I don't know what's happened here. No, no, got to stick with it. <laughs> Are we having some technical difficulties? No, I just, I like the MCU so very much. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> All righty, yes. let's see here. All right, in the future, I will avoid, I will avert my eyes from the top five. I will, I will not bias the uh, selection process, let's say. Oh, there's a lot of good ones here, actually. Um, that's funny. That's a, that's a funny one. I'm not going to pick it, but I like that. The top five words you enjoy to say, but I thought the top five game names you enjoy saying. There's Sometimes I say name of a game, and we just laugh oh. about it. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And now, 30 seconds from now, that will be on the list of suggestions. Well, I know, but I've already... Yep. Um... Oh, that's a good one. Okay, here we go. All right, here we go. I picked five for you. This gives you a lot of options. All right. The top Our five. Finalists are. The top, top five games. They said uh, BGG's top 100, but we'll just say the top five high ranked games of BGG that you won't ever play. Okay. You feel like you'll never get to them. Top five games to be played with a 52 card deck. Your top five favorite resource tokens. Your top five. Favorite Kickstarter experiences, and your top five X the dice game. Oh, wow. Okay. I have to admit, I was kind of tuning out there, but you okay, you've given me an interesting choice. It's down to fill in the blank the dice game and uh, just the, the you know the the BGG top, which actually I really that was going to be so easy for me. That I just want to do it because that's going to be hard for you, and I'm genuinely interested 
in what you're going to say about that one. So I hope to do X the game later, but uh, the first one you mentioned, the uh, you know the the, the top ranked BGG games that we will simply never get around to. All right, not a problem. I'm bringing them up here on screen so we can look at them, and yeah. you'll see that yeah, I've yeah, yeah. played I will do most same. of them. So this one actually is a top ten list that is fairly objective, right? Because if one of us yes. has played it, it can't be on the list. Yep. So the highest ranked... Oh, is that how you want to do it? Um, well, it has to be, cause, right? I mean, Cause... For me, I mean, there's like 20 or so war games in the top 100. And, well, right, and but what I'm saying is... If... Played by me. But I can't agree with it if I if I will play it. So they have to be ones we agree Ooh, on. Ooh, of course. Yes, I love it. I love it. Let's do this. Let's do this thing. So I'm feeling right. pretty far. All right, the, the highest ranked game, I already knew that what this was, is Kingdom yep. Death Monster. I think you played oh. this one, though, right? I... I have not played this, but I would love to get a chance to play KDM. Uh, See, I, I think um, I don't. I don't know that I would love to play it, but I don't know that I'm going to say I won't ever play it. Exactly. I mean, obviously, it's easy to dismiss out of hand because of the puerile nature of it, and um, you know, it's it's over grim darkness. But, but I am so intrigued by that game's approach to combat, where the monsters you fight are it's kind of semi-randomized deck of cards, and you go through their deck multiple times, and they get weaker because cards get pulled out. I love that, and I would love to see the the broader meta, um, you know, building up your society, um, you know, having huge crushing things happen to it, building up again. There's so many ideas in that game I like. I just wish it had been set in a more traditional fantasy universe or something. Uh, um, because yeah, I mean, my wife will has zero interest in going into that world. I'm sure you do, and honestly, I've it, I'm kind of creeped out by it too. All so right, I don't think next, we can do that. Got to keep going. The next one I is Lisboa, but I think I might play Lisboa. You would play Lisboa if it were in front of you. How could Same you thing not? With it's on Mars. Start again. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I'm just, I, that's what I'm saying. Pandemic Iberia. I just never got to that. So that's already the top 100. Yeah, this is gonna. We're gonna have to go deep. I bet because well, again, maybe. you're an omnivore. Vinhos and Endeavor. I would play. Oh wow. Okay, here we go. All right, let's take a look at this one. Seki Jahara, the unification of Japan. That, this... if I recall correctly, is a, uh, isn't that a card battle system style game? Or it, it's a, it's an, it's supposedly very, very good. Oh no, it's, a... is it like a, um, a coin style game? People have told it's me over the years. It's 180 minutes. It's, it is a war game. Um, it, uh, three hours. <laughs> well, there you go. You're getting older. Rodney Smith did a how to play of it? Wow. No dice. Ah, I hate to say I won't play this one. I, the, the chances are pretty low, but you never know. This one is... I'll hold this one in reserve, because I know that you wouldn't play it. Okay, okay. I have been told by several people I should, that I might be surprised, but I suspect I wouldn't. So, yeah, that's an easy one if need be. Life is too short. I got 80 games out there on myself. I got oh, here's one I'm not going to play. I'm okay, not going to play probably Secret Hitler because uh, there's so many social deduction games out there, tons of them. There's so many good ones that I don't know that I would play this one just because I don't want to give people this impression of me who might be walking by the table or why, whatever. Why, why, I mean, why, why treat that subject matter lightly? Here's the question, though. Would you play Secret Voldemort? Yeah, probably. because that is the fan-made alternative, um, which I have actually played. Yeah, I, I, I might, I, I, but that the original game, not fan mods. I would agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Again, I, I want to be really careful here, folks. I'm not calling down on people who do play it. I'm just saying yep. that for me personally, and I, I know I know that the game is technically not even really about Hitler. It's just that why play for me. Why play? I'm trying to get more people into gaming. And this doesn't... There are this many other have... games that scratch the same itch that do not have to be quite so in your face. Yeah. That's a good oh, one. Here's one I'm never going to play. Ooh. 1830 Railways and Robber Barons. I'm, I'm right there with you. I would All have right. to be drug kicking and screaming to the table. <laughs> I'm sure it's I'm sure it's fine. Uh, yep. We actually, if I'm not careful, we may end up with more 1800 games because <laughs> they are ranked pretty highly. Um, yes, they are. Ooh, Pax Premier. No, I'm gonna play that. Um, Navigador. 
That one I might play someday. Indonesia. Uh. That's a is that, that's a splatter. Run, yeah, isn't it? I won't say never say never, little, but Splatter so isn't selling me. Yeah. So, oh, I can tell you right now. Supposedly, it's a lot of people consider it the best one. A lot of people consider it the high watermark for Splatter, though. Well, this is nice. I don't have to do any work here. I just well, no, I'm, I'm asking. Okay, how about like the audience? Here's one I'm never gonna play: Imperial 2030. But that's because uh, I dislike why? Imperial. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah I exactly. Figure, so I figure changing the date isn't going to make me like the game. Oh, yeah, okay. There you go. Good enough for me. I, mean, yeah, I love Mac Gertz, but that's certainly one I'm never going to play. If wow. Mac himself showed up at the door and said, huh? Huh? I just flew all the way from Germany. Huh? I'd probably say, maybe we should just go play some Concordia instead. If That'd Mac nice. Gertz showed up, I would probably play <laughs> at my door. Um <laughs> I should be careful. All right, we be... won't use that metric then. <laughs> so... Ooh, ah, here I stand. I gotta say, I've always been fascinated by this game. Here I stand as a big. It's not necessarily a war game, but it's based on the Reformation, and you're playing one of the different factions. It's a long game. I really don't think I'm gonna play it, but in the right situation, I might. Just because of your appreciation for the historical element of it, I really like. I really like that time period. I don't. I yeah. wouldn't have wanted to live then, because everybody yeah. was fighting everybody. But it's really interesting <laughs> to read about. <laughs> Nemo's War. Ooh, <laughs> but you played Nemo's War, right? Uh, no, I have not. And that is not on my list of things to do. Is that that's the solo game, isn't it? Right. And here's the thing: I'm playing a lot more solo games these days. Yes, so, I mean, in fact, I just spent I've the entire weekend playing times. solo People games. People have been after me to play, particularly because I think there are there is now official co-op rules for it also. But it is such a dice fest. It is way too dicey for me. It's just nothing but, hey, make some decisions, roll some dice, see if they work, repeat for two hours or however long a game lasts. So that one is off of my list. I mean, I love the, the setting and the theme and the presentation, but not the gameplay. I, it still might happen. I can't put it on right All now. All right. This is going to be tough for you. Uh, you just can't say no. Oh, here's one I won't play, and that's Civilization. Right. Uh, and I can tell oh, you the, why. Uh, the older because, one. Right, because if ever I was going to play a game in this genre, there are more new modern ones that I would exactly. play. You wouldn't want even, to. Do it to be able to appreciate the evolution of the genre. Nah. Nah. I, <laughs> I can appreciate it from a distance. I can appreciate what it's done for the hobby. I, I, I'm i not like like dogging on it. I'm just not going to play it. Also, well, I play that when you can play Through the Ages or any number of, of, of its successors that built. It stood on its shoulders and did so much more. Totally understandable. And I would agree with that as well. All right. Well, then... Underneath it is the next one that I'm never going to play, and this one I can guarantee, and that's Advanced Squad Leader. Sure, yeah. Have you played it? No. What in the world would make you think I played it? Well, I am not an answer. You have this dark period where you played a few competitive games, so the, I always the wonder. The darkest I ever went was Small World. Just, just I mean that that's that that's the level of aggression I've been able to pony up. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess anything's possible, but yeah, ASL is, a, is an easy pass. Oh, someone. Okay. So someone's asking about the secret Hitler logic here, um, as to, well, lots of games offend lots of people, but my, my, uh, counter to that would be, I think secret Hitler would offend zounds of people. Indeed. Yes. Lots of people would be offended by various games. You know, oh, this three people don't like this game. I, I can't if I, I I can't play a game that's that that will offend nobody because very likely no game exists. Right. But Secret Hitler is going to offend some people by very name, um, and yep. this is not just hearsay. I have run into more than a couple of those people. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I whoever made the comment, I'm sure is trying to say, but you'll play Mombasa, which is all about you know. A clone. Colonialization and subjugation of, of Africa, right? That's offensive. 
Well, on the simplest level, that game is not called Subjugation and Exploitation of Africa. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's you know, right. wearing it on your sleeve, saying, you know, we're going to be all about Hitler. We're going to be all about sneaking around and trying to figure out who can be Hitler is just an instant turnoff. And when the resistance exists or any number of other games that scratch the same itch, why, why would you seek it out? Uh, um, and everybody has their own thing. Again, I want to be really clear. If you're playing Seeker Hitler, I'm not judging you at all, even inside. You don't want to fun shame here. Exactly. Right. It's uh, because it I'm is just a saying fun that game. I think I wouldn't. That's just a, a line in the sand that maybe I drew for myself, and yeah, you know, there's you drew certain both games that I just won't do. Maybe games that other people be like, "What?" While I have played games, for example, a game that I play and enjoy, uh, Cash and Guns, I can easily see yeah. some people straight up saying, "There is no way I'm playing a game where I actually physically point a gun at someone." And if you said that to me, yep. I would completely accept that. That makes sense to me. Um, and even though and you I've say, done What's the it, next game? you know, and, and we and we move on. So, yes, I can understand Secret Hitler is not about Hitler and everything else, but I just have some friends who would be offended by it, and I just think, you know what? It's just easier for me to avoid that situation. I don't want to have to also open up every game going, this game's not this, 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 but it's really this, you know. And again, there's a gazillion of these social deduction games out there, so it's not like I'm even missing out on anything, really. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can always play Secret Voldemort. Yeah. Which I think everybody would be much more comfortable. Well, I guess nowadays, uh, Harry Potter's not so popular either, but anyhow. That's a good point. Oh, actually. <laughs> Anyhow, I think we need to put a trigger warning at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> no, I think we'll be fine. Yep, um, yep, yep. Yeah, I, I found that if you say you dislike anything, you know, it's really this is something that I struggle with all the time. I will constantly say things like, I didn't like Cast in the World because the boy was skinned. And then people go, oh man, that's because you had religious background. And I'm like, no, it's, it's because I, no, I don't want to play a creepy. game on human skin. I don't know that that has anything yeah. to do with any of that. And I feel Atheist, every time I say, I, don't, I also find it really creepy and gross. <laughs> yeah, there, there's just some and games that are brother, dark. I, mean, I don't. If I don't like it because it's dark, I always find it weird that people kind of shame you for that. They're like, "Ooh, you don't like dark stuff." Okay, sure. Yeah. I also don't like yeah. the Care Bears. Yeah. You know, well, except I guess shame I like them right Rada. back. You don't like Care Bears? What's wrong with you? <laughs> people, people like what they like. There's no reason to like shame. If, if people are having a good time with, I assume it's sooner or later we're going to hit um, Cards Against Humanity, which I'm sure is off of both of our lists as well. Uh, I don't begrudge. I've had friends and co-workers who really dug it. Hey, great. Um, I'll play the next game with you. It's fine. There's plenty of fun games. Well, either way, we did hit five. So that's Secret okay. Hitler, 1830, Imperial 2030, Civilization, and ASL. All probably very fine games. Uh, they're in the top 300. Actually, ASL was 299. So that's pretty high up there. But again, uh, I feel like I've played more games in the top 300 than most people, so I feel like I'm okay. Yep. <laughs> All right, folks, it's question time. Thing. I'm really glad I chose that one. Yeah. It's question time. Ask us some questions. <laughs> we'll see. All right. We'll see what happens here. Uh, it's funny. I, I tell you, every year I struggle to play as many of the highly rated games as possible. It's, it's so hard. It is so hard. You know, Tom, you could stop playing some of the ones that as soon as you open the box, you realize it's a piece of junk. You could stop. That's more time for the good stuff. You know, I don't hate playing bad games, though. I know it sounds weird, but the okay. experience, as long as I'm playing weird. with fun people, I don't right. really care. And we can all laugh about how bad the game is. Now, the second time, uh, <laughs> although I had one of my, my daughters was yelling at me last night. We're playing this roll and write game. She's like, this is trash. I'm like, that's my job, dear. You know. <laughs> Let me throw it off the roof, Dad. I'll make, make you proud. All right. Our first question here is not right. board game related. What are your favorite scents of autumn? Scent of autumn. What A pile of leaves, of for one. Yeah, I mean, are, what are the other scents of autumn? Uh, um, pumpkin, I, I was guess. just going to say... If you're in a mall, you smell a lot of pumpkin spice wafting out of every uh, uh, Starbucks, I suppose. How I bet smell doesn't travel very far. Hot chocolate, because that starts that starts in the fall. Or apple cider. Does apple cider have a smell? I don't think it does. 
Does what? I do love eggnog. Sense of autumn. Yeah, it doesn't have to just be nature and environment. It could just be stuff that comes out. Not a particular... Uh, I guess as a kid, I kind of like the smell of a tree in the house. Although now I just look at that and say, oh, how gross. Why go kill a living creature just so that we can adorn its corpse with a bunch of baubles? Not wanting to Christmas shame anybody, but... I never understood. This is one thing. We're getting into Christmas now, which is not fall, but... I never understood the whole yeah. live tree thing anyway. It's much easier to do artificial tree. It's so much cheaper. <laughs> I just, yep, yep, yep. Each year I just pull it out. And all right, anyway, we're getting off topic here. Um, oh, apple pie. That's a good one. Although apple pie apple has always fascinated me. I don't know if that's particularly autumnal. Apple pie does not smell like apple pie. It just smells like cinnamon. Straight up. I'll tell you the worst smelling time of year is the 4th of July. I could do without the smell of gunpowder everywhere, infusing everything. I got nothing. I, I guess maybe I'm just not very um, olfactory oriented. All right. <laughs> Would you play a Care Bear miniature game? <laughs> uh, from Stefan Feld, sure. That would be awesome. Uh, what's your favorite pumpkin-flavored thing? Uh... Probably donuts. There's actually uh, uh, that w there, there's a bakery in town that does very very good uh, pumpkin spice donuts. Or actually, no, they're it's they're regular they're old fashions, but they have this pumpkin spice uh, frosting they put on, which is phenomenal. My mom waits all year for it. It's like a pumpkin uh, you know cream cheese type concoction. That's really, really good and quite unlike stuff I've had elsewhere. I'd go with that. Yeah, I'm not a huge pumpkin fan, so I'll say pumpkin seeds because I do like eating them, but uh, wow. I don't think they taste That's like pumpkin. Of, that is not, not within the spirit of the question. That's I like know. real pumpkin stuff. That's not... <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to give any clues out yet, per se, but we can give a general. Has 2020 given you any games that have a high likelihood of being in your top 100? Yes. I, I, yes, definitely. I, but, I can think of two off the top of my head right now, and there's a bunch I'm very excited about. They're still coming. Yeah, I got several, but I'm always also when I do a top 100, you sit down and you realize it. It it's easy to be abstract, and you talk about this. You're like, oh, that's definitely in this top 10 or that. It's when you sit down and look at them all together, everything changes. Yeah, I suppose that's not though. I mean. If I ever get around to doing my top 100 of all time, it will truly be of all time. Unlike your all time that changes 40% every year. So it's not Do not all care. Time at all. Don't care. It's of all time right <laughs> now. <laughs> of all, all of this time, basically. Because there's no tomorrow. There's only today. Um, I, just to give a shout out, I love Calico and Cosmic Colonies. I think both probably punch into my top 100. Those are both excellent, excellent games. They're very good, both of them. I don't yep. think they'll make my top 100, but then again, it's a hard barrier to break. Well, we'll see. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Why well, is it time you got to make more room for all the punching and kicking and Eric Lange type games, whereas my uh, top 100 is all stuff like that. I, I think the best game I played, the, last, the best two games I played in the last three or four months have both been Euro games, for sure. Dude, right. come on. Drop that hint. No. One of them's being reviewed this week. All right. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Very exciting. Why is it time that you don't tend to play Vitalis Serda games? There are two reasons. One is they're big, <laughs> grandiose, heavy games, and I, I will get to them maybe at some point. But the main reason, Eagle Griffin doesn't send them to me. So they are much lower priority. I, I, go, I give the highest priority to the companies that send me games. So I have that same problem. I, I have literally, um, I was so bummed that they didn't ping me to cover uh, his his lightweight game, uh, Mer Mercado de Lisboa. It's, I don't know why. Uh, Eagle Griffin, they, they're just kind of a blind spot there, I think. Or they figure, well, we don't need to spend whatever, $7 to get coverage of our game. Go sure, figure. and if that's the case, you know, and that is the case. It is very cheap for that. But... I yeah. just I, I don't have a lot of time to like mope about it or whatever. There's like a, there's so many other games. It's not like I'm uh, sitting around going, uh, yes. oh no. Honestly, they're doing us a favor, not sending us these super behemoth games that will take a week to learn and you know and all the rest of it. No, I was just kidding, Coralie. My kids can have any opinion of games that they want. In fact, I asked them their opinions. I just thought it was funny. She started doing a mini review of the game. Um, 
What was your favorite Halloween costume you ever wore? I dressed up one uh, time as an accident yeah. victim, and then I drove a, a van to pick up kids for school. So oh, no. <laughs> other cars were <laughs> stopping and looking at me while I was driving. Oh, no. Oh, and, and that was just a coincidence. It wasn't like you dressed like that specifically to accentuate the uh, van trip, but rather... I'm not going to say you... that. Here's the problem. It was twin day, and if you realize, I don't look like a twin with anybody. So <laughs> uh, so I found a, a teenager who liked to do this sort of thing. I said, hey, let's both... I, I had this extra blood. Don't worry. Don't ask why. Uh, fake blood and stuff. And I said, let's just pretend that we're accident victims as twins. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have one. I, I stopped doing Halloween probably by the time I was eight or nine or ten, and never really. I've never gone to Halloween parties as an adult. And the only one I can remember from the brief window when I was doing it was a uh, the traditional. Hey, got a bunch of cardboard boxes, put aluminum foil all around it, turned into a robot thing. I thought that was really neat that my mom made for me. Um, although you know, of course, all the other kids got to dress up as Spider Man and the Wolf Man because they had store bots stuff so even that was kind of yeah i i don't i do not have a long uh series of good uh, memories about dressing up as halloween i do like the candy though uh what type of magic player were you aggro control combo stall mm, um i played a lot of white um i don't know what how that would uh my wife, she was definitely blue. She was all about just messing with me and stopping me from doing whatever she wanted. Uh, um, and I was very, very white, very defensive, I guess. That's pretty much what white is, right? So I, I think that's how it broke down. And it was super frustrating to play with her. Uh, sometimes I still wake up screaming in the middle of the night, Tim! Tim! As I, as I have flashbacks or whatever. Not Tim, not another Timmy. I, I'm a Timmy player. Uh, in a sense that I just want to, I don't care what I'm doing as long as it's cool. So if there's a mm. giant monster, I'm like, how can I possibly get that giant monster yeah. on the how table? How can I get that 10-10 green thing out before the game is over? I don't right. care if I win or lose. I want to attack once with that 10-10 green shambling, whatever There's a planeswalker with this process. ability that can like destroy and wreak havoc, but it, you know, you have to really set it up. I'm like, how is that possible? And if I lose, I'm like, yep. eh, you know. At least I had fun putting stuff out. I, I can tell you my least favorite is also blue. Just because, yeah. to me, and I feel this way with a lot of games, blue Blue does well by decreasing your opponent's joy. Yes. Let me build a deck that is custom designed to ensure you have no fun. Yeah, and that's fun for you, but not yeah. fun for me. Exactly. And that's why yeah. I've never been a huge fan of blue because of that, because it feels like, and even I've had that happen to me. Someone will do something cool and I'm like, oh, um, no. And you feel so <laughs> guilty because their look of, oh, oh, yeah. that's a stupid card. Well, there's another 10 minutes down the drain as I slowly and inevitably, uh, yeah. Uh, to be honest, though, mostly, I never really got into deck building when we did play Magic. I love playing sealed deck tournaments. That was always my favorite thing. What was it? Um, like two starters and two boosters. You have 15 minutes. Make the best deck you can. They're like, ah! I love these crazy Frankenstein monstrosity decks. And just, you know, you don't know what it's going to do for you, but you're just having a good time. And it's a mix and mash of stuff. What do you typically order at an Indian restaurant and how spicy? Um, when we lived in Texas, we Jen and I both were pretty... Um, resilient in terms of spice but ever since texas we are definitely on the mild end um oh shoot i, I there's there's a place in guilford in england per the perboni that we absolutely loved what was it oh shoot no man i haven't ordered this forever now um well while he's pausing yeah. i'll say tangori chicken although i once went to a place that had tangori shrimp which was the right. best i also like that really flat bread i don't know what it's called but i could eat it all day long uh, unfortunately, here in Homestead, we have no close Indian restaurant. It's a very sad thing. Uh, and how spicy? I can't wait. He, did he go look for the menu? Um, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Jen remembered. 
our two favorite things we always got were, were um, chicken rogan and lamb dopiaza. I haven't had the second, but the first one I do enjoy. Uh, for how spicy, this, this drives me nuts. Every time I go eat at Indian or Thai, they say, how spicy. And I'm like, I don't know what that means. I don't know what your spice nope. is. You know, like they'll say one to five. And so sometimes I'll say, well, I can handle pretty say, spicy what, stuff. What, is this on the Scoville chart? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'll say five. But I found that nowadays I just say I lived in Korea, which is helpful because then they like, oh, okay, so he can handle this. But really, so your time in Korea and that acclimation has carried over. It hasn't worn off. Well, I, I was always pretty spicy anyway. Uh, but it's oh, a way okay. to get it to. Okay. Yeah, well, no, but it did. It did change my wife and kids. My kids grew up eating oh. that. So when they came back to America, um, fortunately, Amy is now at college. So my hot sauce shelf is now depleting at a slower rate, which is nice. <laughs> uh, Steve just gave us a super chat and said, thank you both for being awesome, reasonable humans. Thank you, Steve. Monica says, living in a house with lots of squirrels or listening to 100 birds on the roof every day. Oh, oh, we have to choose? Yeah. I thought she was actually describing her situation in life. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, that's terrible, Monica. What's the question? <laughs> um, what was it? Birds or squirrels? You, ha you live in a house so with lots of squirrels around. or listening to 100 birds on the roof every day. What kind of birds? Because that matters. I suppose. I don't want either of those, Monica. You're a monster. Birds. I think I'd go with squirrels, in all honesty. They'd be less piercing. Earplugs would take care of that because it's a softer rustle sound, I think. All right. This one is a big deal. I don't know all if right. you heard about this, but what do you think about GameFound going head-to-head -head with Kickstarter? So have you heard about this? Hey, why don't you uh, inform all the audience? Because, of course, I know what you're talking about. Okay, what? so GameFound is owned by Awakened Realms. It's their backer kit of, to some degree. Oh. So they're okay. starting up, Game uh, GameFound is now also going to be doing kicks, not, it's not Kickstarter, I'm sorry, but crowdfunding projects. Okay. And this has been attempted in the past by multiple companies, the biggest being Indiegogo, of course. Exactly. But what GameFound yeah. announced today is their next project, which is the space one, uh... Uh, I don't know. Whatever Awakened Realms' next project is, it's the space one. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. They are going to be putting that on this new crowdfunding thing. And oh, I meaning always... their next big super world killer like Ether Fields and this War of Mine and, and all the stuff they do are always big, huge, million dollar plus campaigns. And they're saying, yeah, we're, you know, you got to come to us if you want this now. Yes. Now, this is a bigger deal. Because when these other ones start, so whenever a new crowdfunding site starts, I say, you know what? They're never going to go anywhere unless they can pull in a Gloomhaven. Yeah, yeah. But Awakened Realms puts out in the top projects of Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah, Their yeah, projects yeah. consistently bring in millions. And even when they do like a Euro game, like the Great Wall of China, that one did really well. But I mean, you look at Nemesis, the sequel to Nemesis... Uh, Tainted Grail. These games just did massive. They're monster hits. So doing it on their own, yeah. it's tempting. We'll have to wait and see what if they can get other publishers to come in. Because what will happen is if a publisher... What do they go offer? And, um, to, pub to publishers. I mean, I assume a, a smaller percentage, uh, you know, smaller fees and all that. You know, I don't know. I know that they've been... They said that they've been their backer kit. It's called I mean, GameFound. Their post Kickstarter thing, that's been uh, that's been uh, free for a while. Oh. I can't imagine that it's gonna stay free. Uh huh. You know, I didn't read the whole news story completely, um, okay. so I don't know if they're offering or if they're actually just gonna do their own as a proof of concept. You know, that's it's it's. Oh, I see. Well, like, like what was it? Hasbro just did with the uh, the Hero Quest, and apparently they've had their private, you know, fundraising thing for years now, which we just didn't notice until Hero Quest came out on it. 
But people yeah, have been getting I can, unique Transformer dolls that way. I will say on a personal level, I mean, I, I understand why Hasbro did it because, hey, you don't pay Kickstarter the 5%, so why? Exactly. But I'll tell you, yeah, that, yeah. That, that Pulse site, <laughs> boo. Oh, I really? I don't like it at all. It There's like wow. no gameplay video. There's no, you know, it doesn't. It doesn't update the amount. You have to refresh it. I went wow. through it. The shipping costs are hidden till the end, and they're astronomically high. Um, I didn't like it. Now I'm not. That, I'm not. That that's nothing to do with the game. That's yeah, just the yeah, yeah. the pulse itself or whatever. So. Well, I mean, I, having only just heard about it now for the first time, I my gut response is good. Competition, great. Shake Kickstarter up a little bit. It's a tough kind of thing, right, right to go up against, to go up against a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanguard. Well, Vanguard well, is the name of the. Makes sense. I mean, the, if they can the get game. comparable, in results and not have to pay, um, you know, five percent to Kickstarter, why wouldn't you? Right. Yeah, they but said they've handled two hundred fifty projects mm -hmm. so far. I'm reading the press release now, and they did it for free. Um, but they were just getting a trusted community of creators and backers, and now they're going to do this. Uh, I think they haven't really talked about a lot of what they're going to be offering people. So I'm wondering hmm. if they're going to make everything's automatic, no more meddling with huge graphic files. So it's going to be easier for the creators to create. Add-ons, you can add on to your pledge right away instead of the end. That's a huge deal. I'll tell you, as someone oh, who sure. has made Kickstarter projects, it was very frustrating to deal with add-ons. Someone would be like, how do I add this on my pledge? How do I do this? Like, wait till the end, and yep. then you'll leave the clunky Kickstarter website and go to Backerkit or whatever it is, and then you can pick your stuff. Yeah, but in the meantime, you can't do it now, so it can't go toward stretch goals or you know building enthusiasm. It's, yeah. A I pledge mean, Kickstarter level? certainly use a kick in the pants to kind of catch up and you know streamline its process make it better for the you know the project runners and for the backers a pledge level will show what's in it which is neat so you know in kickstarter yeah. the pledge levels are on the side and then i have to go into the campaign and go down to find what it is uh yep, campaign no mini wizard every every project does it differently yeah um they will have the pledge manager is automatically included. Comprehensive invoicing. They're not talking about it. They said they're going to be using their next major game for a pilot program. Then they'll have a closed access adaptation period where only a few selected crowdfunding campaigns will be launched. And then they said after, in about four to five months later, they'll be taking project inquiries from everyone invested. Yeah. That's it. This is You know what I can say? You, uh, what I can say I wish they had done, which it sounds like they're definitely not doing, is cord with Board Game Geek. And, you know, integrate with with the Board Game Geek site. Something like that, I think, could be very, very cool. Um, well, I don't know if they haven't. I mean, but I, I yeah. mean, I guess if they did, uh, yeah, yeah. they would say. If, they, if they're still thinking about it, guys, I recommend to uh, call up Scott Alden because I suspect... If he would be uh, uh, very interested in partnering up with you as well. Because uh, he is the number one board game kickstart backer in the world because he backs everything with multiple copies you know for the board game geek library and i know he's got a laundry list of ways that he would like to see the experience improve on both sides and i and i bet you he would love to integrate board game geek more into that process because board game geek is an amazing resource that is kind of separate from all this stuff does so, he back everything uh i i i don't know of anything he hasn't next time you're on alaboom ask him you know, I'm actually, well, I can't, you can look up someone's uh, Kickstarter history, can't you? Oh, that's true. That's true. Well, that, that, I know we're getting off topic here, but this is actually big news here, folks. Um, yeah. I hope it succeeds. I, I, um, I mean, I, I, competition is a good thing, implicitly. Yeah, I have to, I don't know how to look through. Um, I'll have to look for it later. I'm curious. Alrighty. Whew. Okay, well, let's jump in this. This will probably be our okay. last question here. Sorry. No problem. Devin says, question. how do you diffuse a terrible gaming experience? If someone is just not having a good time at all, 
or is losing to the point of tears, do you encourage to press on or do you abort the game altogether? Oh, I am. I am. Hit that abort button as fa as if somebody not having fun, then this session has failed. If there, if everyone is not having fun, there is no reason to continue. There's no reason for one player to suffer so that others can enjoy themselves because we can all move on to something that we can all enjoy. Life is too short to sit okay, there so for. I mostly agree with you, but I have a couple caveats to that. Uh oh, caveat okay. waste. Two player game, instantly easy. I'm destroying you. You're not having fun. Boom. It's over. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Kids. You're, you're, you're kicking yourself because you made a terrible mistake and you just don't want it. Don't see how you can keep going. All, all those. Yeah. Yeah. A kid, it depends on why they're being upset. Maybe they just need to learn some good sportsmanship. And so I might encourage them <laughs> okay, to play the game okay. through. Okay. So your, your first caveat is valuable life lesson. Well, for kids. Yes. Now, yes. when it's a all multiplayer right. game. Then it depends, and again, why they're having a terrible experience, because I don't know if, let's say, I'm playing a game of Twilight Imperium, and it's six people, and one yeah. person, they, they're very aggressive, they attack people, and they just get beat down and smashed, and then they're really upset, and they sit there sulking. I'm not canceling five other people's enjoyable experience, because that person put themselves in a bad wow. spot. And... Hmm. I might give that person an out and be like, hey, you know, you don't have to play if you want to go do something else because that's a win-win for everybody. But yeah. I'm cautious. You know, you said cancel it, but I'm hesitant. You know, I played a game before where I'm like, oh, this game's bad. Let's just jettison it. But some other people are having a good time. I'm like, okay, never mind. I'll just power through because they're having a oh, good sure, time. Oh, sure, sure. I mean, I've, for myself, I will power all through and i mean and to be fair certainly if, if i'm if i can see somebody's miserable and i suggest it and they're the first to say no 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 no, let's keep going and then of course um keep going so your point your ca second caveat is if the person having a miserable time got there by being a miserable player yeah Effective. you know got there through antisocial behavior almost I think, though, uh, that's that... Um, that's another valuable that, life lesson moment you're trying to teach there, as it happens. <laughs> yeah, but some of those people that. are too old for me to be to be their parent. And if someone is just a bad person to play with, and they're sulky yeah, yeah. when they're losing, I might... You might not get invited to the next game day. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that's a trickier thing. One of the great reasons to only play games with your wife. Um, so I don't have any of these problems whatsoever. <laughs> if I found myself, in, I mean, if I guess if I was in that circumstance, you're right. I do want to take into account that there are three other people here who are having a blast. And is it fair for them to lose their opportunity for fun? I guess maybe my um, feeling is at that point to really just kind of focus my efforts to lighten the mood, try to help that player find the fun that they're missing point stuff out to them. Although, I mean, God, that can backfire. People can get pissed when you do that, that kind of stuff as well. That's tricky. People are hard. Is basically what it comes down to. Well, there you go. People are hard. But, yeah. that being said, some of the best people I've ever met in my life, I've met through gaming. Yeah, sure. I will gladly put up with people who are not fun to play with every once in a while for all the good people that I've met. Uh, and I all won't... Right. I've had some terrible gaming experiences in my life, for sure. But I've oh, had sure. so many more good ones. And, you know, like last night, I took home some roll and write games. And I was able to play them with my kids. And there you got them. Yeah. And we had a good time. And one of them was terrible. And we still had a good time. And, you know, it just, I don't know. There's just something about that that I'll look back and I will never sit there and go, man, I wish I had done something else. So, yeah, it's a it's an amazing hobby that we are all enjoying, one that is written into its DNA, ensuring that people sit together and have fun with each other, as opposed to sit together and consume passively some, you know, movies or, or whatever. I mean, I am so happy I stumbled across this by accident when I came across a copy of Pandemic, changed my life, never looked back. Yeah, board games are the best. All righty, folks. Well, that's it for another Corner to Corner. Next time, in two weeks, yes. we might change tax a bit, if uh -huh. only because that will be the week of Virtual Essence. 
Oh, yes. So we might talk about that a bit. I can imagine we might have some thoughts on the different games or not because it's weird because some of those games have already been released. Some will be released after us, and it's a, it's a whole confusing process at this point. Yes, yeah, definitely. That's interesting. All right. Well, we'll see, but it will be on Rattle Run Through channel, so join us in two weeks there. All I right. think that's everything we got. That sounds fun. All righty. Well, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Hey, I'm Rado. Have fun gaming, everyone.